टू केसेस द फर्स्ट केस इज इंट्रोडक्शन लिमिटेड वर्सेस नेशनल प्रोवेंशियल बैंक लिमिटेड एंड अनदर केस वाज फ्रॉम आवर सुप्रीम कोर्ट ए लक्ष्मणा स्वामी मुदलियार वर्सेस एल लाइफ इंश्योरेंस कॉर्पोरेशन एंड दीज टू केसेस आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट uh you know the case is for understanding the doctrine of the ultra virus so i am first taking this first case and she, uh, screen i have shared to you here there is the story of a failure company that there was a company and this company was uh, established in 1951 for doing the business related to the festivals of britain because at that time in the britain was the city of the imperial power and many function has to be uh, done in that particular city so for that uh, this company was formed but this business was not uh, profitable and so the company shifted its business after 2 years and started the deck chairs on the sea side resort then that business was also not uh, worked properly and then the company for two year 1958 to 1960 carried no business and finally you know company sold its uh, shares to the another person so new uh, board of director has been constituted and they started the new business in the united kingdom it was uh, usually seen that maybe any business would not give the profit but business of breeding the pig would always be profit profitable business so agar koi sewer palne ka business karta to profitable hoga because people there you know eat pork and people always eat pork whether it is uh, uh, market is high or low so this company also started uh, the business of uh, you know breeding the pig and Uh, you know the company have opened a bank account in 1960 when the new uh, board of director uh, was formed and then the company has opened the account in this particular bank national provincial bank limited the bank account with the time became overdraft that mean the money has been over uh, uh, overdrawn uh, other uh, you know more than that limit and so the company want some security so uh, you know the board of director they have <coughs> uh, uh, pr- uh, wanted to provide the debentures the debenture is the document that acknowledge the debt on the company okay and so along with this uh, debenture the national provincial bank limited also asked the memorandum so the memorandum was also supplied and on reading that memorandum you know they have provided they have accepted the security but later on this business was also not uh, turned into with a profitable business and in 1965 the company was uh, you know ordered for wound up when the company was ordered for the wound up there was the question regarding the uh you know the amount that the national provincial bank limited has given the national provincial bank limited were happy that because they are to be secured creditor because they have the debenture so when they produced the debenture and asked the money at the time of wound up it was rejected it was rejected by the liquidator that the company has borrowed the money outside the object clause and so this transaction was ultra virus okay and then the national provincial bank limited they have argued that yes uh, uh you know the memorandum of association has been supplied to us and we have you know watched that also and there in the memorandum there was the clause n sub clause n that talking about Uh, the power to borrow or the raise money at sector and on relying that uh, you know we have provided the money the liquidator has rejected and then the case was before the uh, you know the court justice buckley has decided that 
द सब क्लोज एन इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द पावर of the borrowing raising the money on the security mortgage at assets of the company to the uh, this power is given to the company but the power is different with the object the same thing that we have discussed and we have learned in the bell house limited versus uh, you know city wall properties limited case there the court has uh, held that power and the object are the different thing so the power when you know through one of the sub clause is given for the director to do any business that director thinks advantageously in connections or that is ancillary to the object clause written in the uh, you know uh, memorandum so that is the power and there in the bell house limited versus city wall properties limited also it was held that power and the you know the object are the different thing and the power has to be interpreted in the object thing but whether the power has been bona fidely taken or that mean has been taken as in that case was the question advantageously so for that if the director are of the opinion and bona fide thought it to be advantageous for that purpose that cannot be questions but always the power has to be exercised in the limit of the object clause mentioned here and here the argument from the national provincial bank limited that the power is given to the company to the borrow money does not mean this is an independent power to borrow money for any purpose this power has to be interpreted in light of the object clause and so it's very important to find out the object of the company also and accordingly this borrowing money has to be interpreted now if you look on this case material uh, this case provided in your case material uh, from the uh, justice buckley the appeal was forwarded to the uh, you know appellate uh, uh, court and learned judge harman has wrote this judgment so this first para here i uh, making it blue the first para is about the uh, no not this the first para is about the case history that how the case reached to this particular form the judgment of which we are reading the second para is about the facts of this case from this company started its career okay up to the 65 this is the case of uh, facts of this case then in the third para there is this sub clause that talking about and the contention of the uh, you know the respondent bank also that uh, from the sub clause n the power is with the company to borrow raise money in such manner as the company shall think fit and in particular by issue of debenture or debenture stock perpetual or otherwise and to secure the repayment of any money borrowed or raised by the by mortgage charge lien undertaking etc so uh, this sub clause is talking about the raising the money by issue of the debenture and so here the introduction limited company has raised the money by this bank by issuing the debenture and so they are within this power but the liquidator and the Uh, lower judge buckley has rejected it and so the appeal it is before the appellate forum before the learned judge uh, uh, harman now uh, uh, you know the question is before you you have to think also that whether this sub clause and that talking about the company can borrow raise money on issuing debenture can repay it etc whether this can be an independent object clause in itself or is it to be interpreted in the main object clause rule the argument from the introduction limited that they relied in the judgment of the courtman versus borgum in the courtman versus borgum it was held that if there is uh, you know declaration that every clause is independent that every clause has to be read independently 
and here also uh, there are these two clauses clause d that talking about to carry on any other trade or business which in opinion of the board be advantageously carried on in connection with or ancillary to any of the above business and then the sub clause i which is to promote any other company for purpose of acquiring any property rights converting any of the liability of this company or its undertaking and so the another argument forwarded by the national provincial bank limited that the director are uh, you know uh, empowered to do any business and so this pig breeding business is also they thought it to be advantageously or profitable for the company and so that is valid and then this uh, you know raising the money power even if you are saying is for that particular business that the director feel to be do advantageously and then they even relied with the court men so these two argument they have taken the first argument that this is an independent uh, 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 clause sub clause n that gives the power to borrow the money okay in light of the courtman versus borgum the second even if it is not uh, you know uh, without prejudicial to this the second argument that there is another power under the sub clause d that the directors uh, can carry on any uh, you know the uh, the company can carry on any trade or business which in the opinion of the board of director are uh, advantageously carried on in connection with or ancillary to any of the above business so these two argument have been uh, you know forwarded by the uh, <clears throat> national provincial bank and then both these arguments has been uh, rejected by the learned uh, judge uh, harman and he uh, you know gave the judgment same as the beckley judge uh, uh, disallowed this appeal and said that the first argument that it is an independent clause as in the courtman versus borgum he said that no this is the power clause the power is given to the company to borrow the money and that borrowing the money the raising money may be the mortgaging for creating the asset a charge on the asset for issuing the debenture etc and it cannot be in independently as a object clause then from this para the counsel for the defendant bank has relied uh, here the uh, you know the court is saying that i would agree that if defendant bank did not know what the purpose of borrowing was it need not inquire but it did know and i can find nothing in the courtman versus borgum to protect it not withstanding that knowledge so court is saying that when the memorandum was submitted before the court how the court is making uh, you know difference of this particular uh, you know case with the judgment of the courtman as borgum that when the document of memorandum itself was put by the introduction uh, uh, limited before the national provincial bank so they have the knowledge of the memorandum and so the courtman versus borgum judgment will not be applicable because in that case the third person who was dealing was not aware about the object clause okay then the another thing or the another uh, reason behind uh, dismissing the appeal was as the first i have said that it is not an independent it has to be interpreted on the second argument also they have rejected that even if we consider even if consider that this pig breeding business is uh, you know is uh, well done under the sub clause d because sub clause d empower the company to do or any trade or business which the director feel advantageous but that is also subject to that it must be ancillary to it and so unless and until 
यू नो दैट पावर देयर टू कैरी ऑन एनी बिजनेस बाय द डायरेक्टर दैट आल्सो बी विद इन द ऑब्जेक्ट क्लॉज हैज टू बी रेड आउट द मेन ऑब्जेक्ट दैट इज आल्सो द पावर एंड सो द कोर्ट बाय दीज टू जजमेंट बेल हाउस लिमिटेड वर्सेस सिटी वॉल प्रॉपर्टीज लिमिटेड एंड इंट्रोडक्शन लिमिटेड वर्सेस this uh, national provincial bank limited has held that object and the power are two different thing and so uh, you know uh, if you see it you know clearly that mean the same position that was when the asbre railway carriage uh, and iron company limited case the house of lord held the same position is now with respect to this the courtman versus borgum judge, uh, judgment was surpassed and it was surpassed with many you know argument like in this case uh, you know justice uh, learned judge harman is saying that that was applicable only when the third par- party does not have the knowledge or somehow in the bell house also it was you know surpassed and so now the principle is that maybe in the object clause there are many sub clauses but all sub clauses would not be in itself an independent uh, you know the object clauses they are maybe in some form of the power given and so the new rule is that the object clause we have to see in the object clause some provision would be in the form of object and other are in form of the power and these provisions that gives the power to do the company must be always within uh, uh, or with the purpose of fulfilling the object clause okay and so here the you know that activity of pig breeding this activity under the clause d whether it is advantageous or not advantageous us pe question nahi hai ultimately you know that a pig breeding business was also held to be disastrous for the company so question is not on that whether the you know the director thought and it was not held to be the profitable the question is whether that pig breeding can be held in the main clause as an uh, as a main, for main clause or the ancillary uh, or auxiliary to the main purpose of the company and by no uh, you know interpretation it was Uh, held that this is pig breeding can be uh, you know uh, ancillary to the uh, to the main object for which the company was formed and the power given under the clause n for borrowing the money is only either for the main the business under the main object or any other ancillary business that the company has started and the board of director thought that it is advantageous but here the board of director has thought but board of director also has to be thought in light of the main object okay and so uh, finally the court has held that this act of pig breeding is not coming under the clause d and so it is ultra virus and the sub clause n for giving the power to the company for raising money is always for the uh, intra virus object when the object was held to be ultra virus for raising the money for the ultra virus object that power that would also be ultra virus okay any question uh, that you have guys on this particular case uh read you know this uh, last para that uh, this one i don't think i uh, i agree with the judge that it is necessarily implied addition to a power to borrow whether express or implied that one should add for the purpose of the company the borrowing was not for a legitimate purpose of the company and bank knew it and therefore cannot rely on its debenture and i would dismiss the appeal and so the finally that value of that debenture was nothing okay so should i uh, proceed to the next case guys just yes or no yes sir yeah the second case in this series is a lakshmana swami versus life insurance corporation 
देर वॉज ए कंपनी यूनाइटेड इंडिया लाइफ अश्योरेंस कंपनी ओके एंड दिस कंपनी वॉज फॉर्म फॉर डूइंग द इंश्योरेंस बिजनेस सो दैट वॉज द मेन ऑब्जेक्ट इंश्योरेंस बिजनेस एंड इन द ऑब्जेक्ट क्लोज अलॉन्ग विद द इंश्योरेंस बिजनेस सम पावर्स इज ऑल्सो गिवन लाइक दैट फॉर इंश्योरेंस बिजनेस दे कैन हायर एम्प्लॉयज हायर मनी एटसेट्रा एंड इट वॉज विद द इंट्रोडक्शन लिमिटेड जजमेंट इट वॉज क्लियर दैट इन द ऑब्जेक्ट क्लोज एवरी थिंग रिटर्न वुड नॉट बी टर्न एज एन ऑब्जेक्ट सम मे बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द पावर एंड पावर कैन नॉट बी इंटरप्रेटेड इंडिपेंडेंटली बट हैज टू बी इंटरप्रेटेड विद द मेन क्लोज सो द यूनाइटेड इंडिया लाइफ अश्योरेंस कंपनी लिमिटेड हैविंग द मेन बिजनेस और द मेन पर्पज एज द इंश्योरेंस ओके इंश्योरेंस बिजनेस द कंपनी ऑन ए पर्टिकुलर डेट जुलाई फिफ्टीन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी फाइव इन इट्स जनरल यू नो मीटिंग एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डनरी जनरल मीटिंग ऑफ द शेयर होल्डर पास ए रेजोल्यूशन एंड विद दैट रेजोल्यूशन दे रिजोल्व टू गिव द टू लैख रुपीज फ्रॉम द शेयर होल्डर्स डिविडेंट अकाउंट टू ए पर्टिकुलर ट्रस्ट दैट चिदम्बरम चैटियार मेमोरियल ट्रस्ट ओके एंड दिस ट्रस्ट वॉज फॉर्म फॉर promoting the technical or business or other purposes education etc okay then the trust was uh, uh, formed and to the trust they have given the money then the government thought about doing the uh, nationalization in the insurance sector also and so they have passed the life insurance corporation act and by this act a insurance corporation was created whose name is life insurance corporation and this corporation also has to acquire the insurance different insurance companies in which the united india life assurance company limited was also there and there there was the section 15 of the lic act that allows that if any payment unreasonably be given before 5 year before 5 year when the act was come into force the act was come into force on 1st uh, september 1956 that appointed date okay so before that if within the 5 year if some money was given by the company whose business was acquired unreasonably so that can also be you know uh, taken back when this company was acquired whole its assets was acquired by the life insurance corporation lic they so that from the account of the shareholders 2 lakh rupees has been given to a particular trust this chitambaram chetiar memorial trust and so they claim this money from the chetiar trust from the trustees as joint and severable uh, liability and they filed before the tribunal that was constituted and then you know these person has argued that that the company through its extraordinary general meeting through the resolution has uh, you know allowed this money and this money was uh, uh, you know given for the purpose of promoting technical and business uh, you know the uh, knowledge including the insurance knowledge also they have <clears throat> argued from the lic that company can do only thing that is in the object clause so what is the object or anything incidental for which this money was given even through the general meeting also you cannot extend the object clause you cannot pass any rectification that even was uh, in the john buffarte case also it was held even the consent decree was also not creating any type of the stupor 
it's not uh, bounding the company or making the ultra virus act to be the intra virus act and so the here what ob, uh, you know which clause in the object clause allowing the company to do this type of the uh, you know resolution by which they can provide the money and so they found one clause in the uh, object clause where for the insurance education the money can be given and then the question was that whether the money that given to this uh, chitambaram chatiar memorial trust is within that particular clause or not and on that the life insurance corporation argued that this a uh, memorial trust is for uh, you know promoting the education technical business etc also insurance but there is no guarantee that the money will that is given only promote the insurance business and even if the in insurance education even if the people will get the insurance it is no no guarantee that those person will join the uh, you know that Uh, the uh, united india life in assurance company limited and so this is not an incidental to the main uh, object and it was uh, uh, it should not be uh, within the object clause so this uh, uh, you know uh, uh, this, this is the way the life in incorporation has argued this a lakshmana swami was the petitioner who were the trustee of that trust to which the money was given so along with a lakshmana swami mudliyar some other trustee was also dragged to giving back 2 lakh rupees that was given to the trust by the company through the lic they argued adversely that uh, uh, the first argument that the company has through its extraordinary journey, uh, general uh, meeting through the resolution has passed and this resolution is within uh, one of the object clause that is for promoting the insurance education also the company can do company can give some money second thing that this money was from the uh, you know the shareholder dividend account it was not from the account of the company so uh, you know that is the another argument but the both argument were rejected uh, and finally the supreme court that was the forum in this case has held that uh, uh, they have accepted the arguments from the lic so now come to this case here you know this first para this justice uh, jc sar wrote this judgment this first para uh, para number 2 uh, is about the facts of this case about the united life uh, 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 assurance company limited the second uh, this in the inverted comma is about that uh, uh, you know resolution extraordinary resolution then this uh, next para is about uh, this trust and uh, uh, you know their uh, member that how the money has been paid or what is their uh, you know uh, what they are doing they can uh, do you know like the things of lectureship uh, pursuing study etc then the third para is about how the money was paid so first it was paid in 5000 then rest of 195000 then para number 4 is about that when the lic demanded the money and uh, uh, these uh, uh, trustees were uh, you know denied then the lic approached to the tribunal so fourth para is on the tribunal 1958 tribunal directed the plan to pay jointly or severally then this fifth clause is about uh, the section 15 that i was talking about that section 15 of the life insurance corporation allowed that if any uh, money has been given within the 5 year from the date of uh, uh, date before 19th uh, january 1956 without any consideration uh, unreasonably being made so that can be uh, you know uh, demanded back then the para number 6 is uh, you know the character of shareholder dividend account whether that is uh, something different from the company then the seventh is again uh, you know the arguments from the appellant side uh, you know this uh, mudliyar side 
लक्ष्मण स्वामी एंड देन द पैरा नंबर इलेवन ट्वेल्व टॉक अबाउट द मेन डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द केस सो पैरा नंबर इलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व आई एम रीडिंग पैरा नंबर इलेवन आर्ग्यूमेंट वी हैव डन फ्रॉम बोथ द साइड Uh, why the supreme court has rejected the argument of the appellant and accepted the arguments of the life insurance corporation is in the para number 11 this is the reasoning behind the decision the trust has numerous objects one of which is undoubtedly to promote art science industrial technical or business knowledge including knowledge in banking insurance commerce and industry there is no obligation upon the trustee to utilize the fund or any part thereof for promoting the education in insurance and even if trustee unlisted uh, un, uh, sorry uh, utilize the fund for that purpose it was the problematic whether any such person trained in the insurance uh, in uh, trained in insurance business and practice was likely to take up employment with the company thus the ultimate benefit which may result to the company from the availability of personal trained uh, in the insurance if the trust utilize the fund for promoting the education insurance practice and business is too indirect to be regarded as incidental or naturally conducive to the object of the company we are therefore of the view that the resolution donating the funds of the company was not within the object mentioned in the memorandum of association and on that account it was ultra virus where the company does any act which is ultra virus no legal relationship or effect ensure therefrom such an act is absolutely void and cannot be rectified even if all the shareholder agrees the payment made pursuant to the resolution that extraordinary resolution passed in 1955 was therefore unauthorized and the trustees acquire no right to the amount paid by the director to the trust when the the whole uh, you know transaction was void so the amount was paid was unreasonable without consideration and section 15 of the lic act was saying that if any amount is paid within the 5 before the 5 year of the 19th january 1956 then that payment can be recovered back there is one uh, you know object clause para number 10 when you read when you will read the para number 10 you will find that there is the discussion on the object clause of also united uh, life assurance company that there is however no ambiguity in relevant term of the memorandum of association clause 3 of the memorandum deal with the object and the power of the company in language which is reasonably plain the article may explain the memorandum but cannot extend to its uh, scope sub clause 5 merely authorize the company to do all such things as incidental or conducive to the attainment of the above object or any of them and so uh, whether this particular act of giving the money to a trust that will train the persons will do, do give the uh, educations for uh, technical uh, you know uh, science art and even the insurance whether it would be considered as incidental for con- for conducing so uh, you know this thing was uh, finally you will find under the Uh, para number 11 and 12 that it cannot be say uh, said that this uh, giving the money to a such trust is incidental or conducive to the attainment of the main object or any of the main object and so uh, the supreme court has held that uh, uh, you know <coughs> uh, this giving the money to this particular trust which is not Uh, you know giving the education only on the insurance so there is no guarantee that the money will be utilized only for that purpose even if the money is utilized for the insurance education it is not guarantee that those person who are trained there will join the company so it cannot be said as in the uh, sub clause 5 of the memorandum it saying that talking about uh, you know any incidental any incidental or uh, uh, you know uh, uh, conducive 
एनी एक्ट दैट इज इंसीडेंटल और कंड्यूसिव टू द अटेनमेंट ऑफ द मेन ऑब्जेक्ट सो दैट इज आल्सो नॉट इंसीडेंटल और कंड्यूसिव एंड सो इट हेल्ड टू बी द अल्ट्रा वायरस एंड डायरेक्टेड मनी टू बी रीपेड सो दिस यू नो आर द टू केसेस दैट वी हैव डिस्कस एंड फ्रॉम दीज टू केसेस वी हैव लर्न that whatever held has been held by the house of lord or the court in the earlier case of asbury railway iron company limited versus rich that the in the object clause there may be different words or different sub clauses but all words or all sub clauses would not become the main uh, uh, main clause we have to undermine we have to find out the main clause and the other sub clauses will be interpreted in light of the main clause similarly you know later on when the courtman versus borgum judgment came and the business community was very ingeniously tried to uh, uh, incorporate that type of the declaration that ultimately even court accepted that uh, you know when the uh object uh, clause is itself is very clear and unambiguous so we have to give the literal interpretation but then again to protect the interest of the company in bell house limited versus city wall properties limited and in this introduction limited versus national provincial bank limited it was held that in the object clause there may be different sub clauses but those sub clauses are we have to see that whether they are the ob- forming the object or they are just giving the power if those sub clauses are only for giving the power then those power would not in itself would become an independent object those power has to be exercised or has to be seen in light of the main object okay so it's not that where would we be the main object or the uh, the business community or the promoter has to say that this is the main object and these are the powers you know these are the rule of the interpretation the court with the passage of the time has uh, uh, you know uh, propounded like in the constitutional classes or the constitutional law if we talk about about the uh, amendability of the constitutional provisions and in Uh, keshwanand bharti supreme court come up with the new doctrine that doctrine of the basic structure so it's nowhere in the constitution you will find out that where is the basic structure is the just the rule of interpretation and in every case the court has to satisfied that whether this particular provision is the part of basic structure or not so similarly here also you know when we see when there is a question or the dispute of the company activity that whether it is intra virus or the ultra virus in that case we have to see about the object clause and then accordingly every sub clause in the object clause would not became in itself independent like in the courtman versus borgum and then maybe some are of the power in the form of the power okay and then that power has to be seen in light of the main clause and accordingly that has to be interpreted so that mean again uh, you uh, the clauses used in the object clause the sub clauses uh, somehow their uh, you know their scope is uh, diminished by the interpretation of the court rule so with this we have uh, discussed these two cases